Welcome to the Nitty McPurly podcast. I am Devin. Uh, you can find me over at nittymcpurly.com or on Instagram as Nitty McPurly. And if you want to email me, you can email me at devin at nittymcpurly.com. Very excited to be here. It's been a long time since I podcasted, like six months. So um, very excited to be back. I know I can't actually see you, but I feel like we're hanging out. I feel like you have your knitting, you have your drink, you're ready to go. Where's my drink? Hold on, hold on. Okay, <laughs> now I have my drink. Look how cute this mug is. I get the Knit Picks catalog and probably you do too. And when I was looking through it, I always look through it, even though I rarely order anything from them. I saw these mugs and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have this. And I was like, well, I can show it on the podcast. So, you know, it's an investment. So I got the mug um, and I got the water bottle. Isn't it so cute? I love it. It's a good size too. Fits in my cup holder, doesn't slosh around in there. Um, it's like 16 ounces of water and it's just so cute. I just love the colors. It's kind of rainbowy. I love it. And I also um, got this little trinket tray. <laughs> Isn't that cute? You put like, you know, whatever, stitch markers or whatever on there. And since we're showing things, I got the pencil case too. And this is super nice. It's like a, you know, you can put knitting needles in there or pencils or whatever. So anyway, like I was saying, I'm very happy to be here with you. You've got your knitting and your drink and we're gonna hang out and we're gonna knit and we're gonna talk. This is my third po first podcast in like six months. So I'm really glad to be here. I had my final cancer surgery in July. So I'm completely done with my treatment, completely cancer free. And you can see my hair is growing back. Um, it came in mostly gray and so I quick, quick covered the gray. Um, I'm not super in love with the color, but whatever, you know, it'll grow out and I'll change it or do something different or whatever. Um, I got a dog, a puppy. He's a Boston Terrier. His name is Rocky and he is blind. He's so cute. Uh, I'll put a picture of him up on the screen, though I'm sure you've already seen him. He's, he's just the best dog ever. We're still trying to teach him to go outside to go to the bathroom. Um, that's kind of an uphill uphill battle, but um, other than that, he is just the best dog ever. So um, what else, what else is new? I'm homeschooling my bottom three kids, my high schooler, I have to you know drive her there and, uh, and back every day. So that's a, a bit of a trek. So we're busy. She actually has her driving permit. So she drives and then I drive home and then I go get her and she drives home, so. You know, it's, it's a, it's like a heart attack every day, every day, you get a little heart attack in there. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm very excited. You guys, I wanted to show you some knitting that I just realized I didn't get. Um, maybe I'll go get it. Hold on. Okay. I'm back. Um, some of my whips I couldn't even find. Like that's kind of crazy. Um, I've been working on some different things, mostly. Well, first, let me tell you, um, I'm going to be beta testing the Portager bag by Jenny Yun. I don't know if you follow her on Instagram. She's um, J-E-N-N-E-Y-U-N leather, maybe? I don't know. I'll look it up and put it on the screen. But she is making a bag for knitters that... Um, is finally gonna come out. She kind of came out with it um, a year or two ago and it stalled for a little bit, but now she's she's back on it and my bag is coming and I'm very excited. And that was my thought with this, that this could go in that bag. If you wanna go and look at it, I'll, I'll put a picture up here too. I keep talking about these pictures I'm gonna put out. We'll see if I really do that, but um, it's an awesome, awesome bag and this will fit in there really nicely with knitting needles and, and whatnot. Um, there are two knit-alongs. One is happening right now. One is coming up next month. The October is a um, hat knit-along. Here are the rules. You can knit any hat you want using any yarn you want. You just have to knit it in the month of October. Post a picture of your finished hat with um, this hashtag on Instagram and you will be um, 
part of the knit along and enter to win the, the prize at the end. I have not decided what the prize is gonna be yet. Probably some uh, yarn and goodies if you live in the US. And if you live overseas, it'll probably be some free pattern downloads because that's duty free. <laughs> so um, uh, that's the hat knit along. There are hat kits in my shop right now. Um, sorry about the crinkle. I have um, this color, this is mermaid. Isn't that pretty? It looks really pretty in this base. This is the um, MCN Amsterdam Erin. This color is called Mermaid, and you can get this as a hat kit over on my on my website for twenty four dollars, and that includes the yarn and a tin of stitch markers and a little drawstring bag to carry it around in. Twenty four bucks. That's a good deal. Here, this is the tin of stitch markers, and there's um, hexagon rose gold stitch markers in there. How does this sound? Does this sound okay? My camera um, pooped out on me as I was trying to get this going today. So I'm just kind of going forward with my phone, hoping that, hoping that that will work. But anyway, hat knit along. This, if, you want, if you're interested in this kit, it's called the Everywhere Honey Dukes Hat Kit because the Everywhere Hat and the Honey Dukes Hat use Aran Weight Yarn. Um, there's also a Laphroaig and spade hat kit, also 24 bucks. Um, and I, the ones that I have available are in this color called Date Night, which is like a gray with mauve and fuchsia and purple. And, um, and I think there's a couple of pre-orders in there too. So if you order one that's a pre-order, I'll just dye it for you and, and stick it in the mail for you. Um, so that's for this month, that's October. November, we are doing a sock knit along um, and I have a lot of sock stuff in the shop right now. There is a pre-order for the Modern Rainbow Socks number one, which is this sock. I went a little, I went a little crazy on the heel here. I don't know. The other one I just did all yellow, but this one I, I just added a little bit of purple in there. So this is the Modern Rainbow Socks number one, and you can get this kit over at the website. It's, um, I think it's, I think it's $38. And that's all the yarn and a tote bag, a Knitting McPearly tote bag. It's gonna have a little Knitting McPearly logo here. I don't have that on. So that comes with the Knitting McPearly tote bag and the stitch markers. The um, light, it's that, there's some regular hexagon rose gold stitch markers and some of the closable, openable light bulb rose gold stitch markers too that are super pretty. So, um, that is over at the shop, that kit, the, the pre-order. I also have the mermaid sock kit, which has mermaid, it's the same, it's just on a different base. So this is it on the Aran weight and this is it on the Frankfurt fingering weight. And um, it comes with this skein of mermaid yarn with this color's called Sea Tangle and Conch. So that was um, one of the ones I did for this summer. Uh, another one I did this summer that was really popular around 4th of July was the, you know how some people have like these perfect skeins? I see them, I see them post on Instagram and like every single strand of yarn is like perfect. <laughs> That's hard. Like, how do I do that? I'm all tucking stuff in. Here. <laughs> this is the Patriot sock set. And it's kind of a parchmenty color with some um, fatigue green and red and blue, and it's 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 very kind of Fourth of July uh, themed with a red and a blue in there too. So this Patriot sock set is also over on the website. The sock knit along um, is going to use this hashtag here, and it will be in November. So the hat knit along all of October ends on the 31st, sock knit along all of November ends on November 30th. And then we're all gonna knit our advent calendars. Yay! <laughs> if you've got an, a Knitting Curly advent calendar, those will be going out mid-November. I'm aiming for the 15th uh, to mail them out. And so you'll have them in plenty of time for advent. And, but not so long that it's like sitting around like I just wanna open it and I can't. So I'm like, November 15th feels good. Um, 
but, and then through Advent, we're going to work on that project. And um, if you want to make, you can make whatever you want, obviously. It's, it's your yarn, it's your project, you can do whatever you want. But it does come with a mystery knit along, and there's going to be a handful of clues. And um, you can join along with that if you want to. That'll be fun. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm getting through my notes rather quickly. I haven't done this in a while. Can you tell? I feel a little bit awkward. So my knitting, like my own personal knitting, has been very stop and go all year. I spent the first three months in doing chemo, but then, I mean, that takes a long time to kind of get over. Like you still are just not yourself for a while after that. So I did end up publishing a couple of sock patterns. I did um, the Modern Rainbow Socks number one that I just showed you. I also did the Modern Rainbow Socks number two. Do you, are you interested in a pre-order for this kit? If you are, let me know and I will, I'll put that up too before the sock knit along. This has a fun fake cable heel here. This is not, you don't use a cable needle to do this stitch. This is a really easy, fun stitch um, because like I said, you don't use a cable needle. And it's got some color work and it, these are just really, they're fun to wear. Um, these are the Modern Rainbow Socks number two. So I, I published those two socks I also published the friend socks. <laughs> Podcasting. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. <laughs> the friend socks uh, came out a couple months ago and those are great because they come in every size from newborn up to large man because everyone needs a friend on their feet. These are the cutest socks. You really do feel like you have a friend when you're wearing them. They've got little pom-poms as the tails and little faces and yeah, they're, they're really cute. So um, I did do those. I have been kind of here and there working on a dog sweater or two. When Rocky was a baby, we got him in April, so it was still kind of cold out. So I did knit him a tiny little sweater, which obviously no longer fits him. So I downloaded this pattern from Etsy. Um, I don't even know who did this pattern. It doesn't say on here, but this is, isn't this cute? It's, it's got several sizes and it's like a cable dog sweater. This is in DK. Um, I did cast this on and kind of start it. Honestly, though, I, I haven't picked it up in a couple days. I'm not exactly sure how far along I am. Okay. So I have the collar <laughs> and that's it. But excuse me, it is getting cooler out. And, you know, um, Rocky is a Boston Terrier and they're kind of temperature sensitive. So I did want him to have a sweater. This is the um, Jean, no, not Jean Valjean, Javert. This is the Javert colorway from Nitty McPurley, a yarn dyer you may be familiar with. Uh, and that's in the Dubrovnik DK. So at some point I will finish that. Um, the other thing that I have been working on is, well, working on, this has really just been languishing for a while. Um, a lovely lady whose Instagram is Yelly's Wonders, she's in the UK. She did a faux set. I'll try and tuck in these ends here so that you can see the sweater. She did a faux set in these colors and I loved it so much that my friend Sheila over at Bigfoot Fibers sent me yarn in those colors to make one for myself. Isn't that so cute? So I don't even know if these colors have names. I think she just did them for me. Although this one I think might, I feel like that was one that, that she did a lot of. But um, anyway, now that I pick it up, I kind of feel like I want to work on it. Um, it's a super satisfying knit. A lot of people have knit the faux set. That is my most popular pattern. It's funny, whenever I get an email that has a, um, like a, a German sounding or a French sounding name, I'm like, somebody bought a faux set <laughs> over in Europe. It's very popular over there. Um, so yeah, so I've, I've got that. I have another sweater that, well, let me tell you, let me tell you about this one. Let me tell you a story of failure. I found this, my daughter's making fun of me. I found this picture 
of a ready to wear sweater and I loved it. And I was like, I love this sweater. I wanna make something like it that's a knitting pattern. So I was so excited. I went downstairs, I dyed the yarn, I got everything ready. I picked out the stitch I wanted to use. I knit the sweater and it was a seamed sweater, which I did not love, but I was willing for this particular design because I just liked it so much. And um, it was done and I put it on, I seamed it, blocked it, put it on, and I was like, I hate this. <laughs> this is hideous. My husband was like, yep, it's hideous. He's like, the 90s called, they want their sweater back. <laughs> so I just got rid of it and just, I just let it go. Um, I actually had several, <laughs> it's Gigi, she's making fun of me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna point the camera toward you. <laughs> um, so I actually had a bunch of sweaters that I was gonna do this fall. And then I realized that I just don't need to kill myself <laughs> doing that. And I've been thinking a lot about, she's still there. Go away, Gigi. Um, I've been thinking a lot about style and I've been thinking about the things in my closet that I wear a lot and that I like the most and what I want to make next based more on what do I want in my closet than what do I feel like knitting? Because, and both of those things have a place. I started following this lady on YouTube. Uh, her name is Erin Busby. Her, her YouTube channel is Busby Style. And she talks a lot about having basics, like basic white shirts and basic black shirts and basic pants and ba things that you can add something interesting to. <clears throat> and as knitters, what we want to add that's interesting is our knitted sweater or our knitted shawl or our knitted socks or whatever that is. But you have to have that basic stuff in your wardrobe. And I'm a person that typically is drawn to patterns and colors. And so I look at my closet and I'm like, why is everything in here patterned and bright? And that's just, it's just too much. Like you need to, you know, I need to level it out with some basic things so that I can either, so I can dress it up with something that I have made, especially something with a lot of color. Cause I do like to make things that have a lot of color. So we want to make the things with color, but we need to own the basic boring things to put them together so we don't look like we're wearing just too much crazy stuff all at one time. Um, related to that, I was cleaning out my closet this weekend. I sent out a newsletter to my newsletter people today and I, I told this story. I was cleaning out my closet and I was trying to get rid of the stuff that I never wear. And I found that a lot of that stuff was thrifted because I'm a thrifter. I like to thrift things. I like to get a good deal. I am a bargain shopper, but you don't want to end up with a closet full of stuff that was cheap and that you don't like or wear. And I, I was kind of at that point. And so I, was, I just started thinking a little bit more about that and about how I would rather have something that's exactly what I want, one of them, that maybe I paid a little bit more for, that is exactly what I want and that fits perfectly and I will wear it a lot because I really like it. Um, now that said, this awesome black shirt that I got not too long ago, I got at TJ Maxx for, I don't know, 17 bucks. So every now and then, you know, they kind of mesh. <laughs> um, but anyway, my, my point in telling that story was that um, I realized I needed to get rid of the stuff that I wasn't gonna wear, and I would rather put in things that are more basic so that I can match them to my louder knitted things. Um, a few years ago, I went off black. Like I was like, I'm no more black. I think I just blacked out. I had like too much black. And uh, I was like, no more black. So I, for years I didn't wear black, but now I'm, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back in black. Um, but black is great because it goes with everything. And it was funny, like when I would be trying to model like a, a, a bright colored shawl back in the day, I'm like, I don't have anything black to put with this. But so now I do, I'm kind of, you know, moving, moving back that way. So anyway, that's my style reboot thinking. So along those lines, so, there's the loud, there's the, the body of the louder knits that we need the basics to go with. But I was also thinking about knitting something that would itself be a basic. 
And I tend to like things that are colorful and interesting and, and fun. And so I really had to decide, like, do I want to do this more meditative knit? So I dyed up this color, which I'm going to call parchment. It's kind of like a, a like a beige or a taupe that leans pink. And um, this is my base called um, Fort Lauderdale Fingering. After chemo, your brain doesn't work like it used to. So I just don't remember things like I used to. But um, Fort Lauderdale Fingering, which is very similar to Frankfurt, except that it's just a little bit drapier. So what I decided that I wanted was a turtleneck. This is as far as I am right now. A turtleneck that has with a, a sweater with raglan shaping, okay? So raglan shaping that goes down too far so that the sleeves will be very wide and then will narrow and that the bottom of the sleeve will be like at your natural waist. So that's kind of what I'm working on right now. If the knitting is tight, it's because I'm knitting while my daughter is driving. And that's like, <laughs> I'm just making fun of her now. Um, so this is, this is knitting as a basic. Another option, if you're interested in doing like a meditative knit where this is gonna be a knit one, purl one, and then it's gonna be stockinette with raglan shaping, and that's it. There's gonna be ribbing at the arm, probably like a three quarter sleeve, and at the bottom, and that's it. It's gonna be like movie theater, movie, catch up on your show, knitting, driving in the car, like, where you don't need to put in a lot of mental energy to work it. But at the same time, you run the risk of it growing boring. So an option for something like this, it would be to knit it in like a bright color, which I've done before. I don't know, does that help? I don't know. Or a speckle, that would maybe make it a little bit more interesting, but I've, I'm kind of em embracing the monotony of it. Like just, this is the thing that I want. And so I'm willing to put in the time that it takes to get there. So, Okay, in shop news, stitch marker necklaces are back. Let me tell you the story of this. So originally I was sourcing the parts for the stitch marker necklaces from wherever, probably China. I don't know. I just, I would, I would source the different parts. I would get them all and I would assemble the necklaces myself, kind of designing them myself with their own, you know, different chain lengths and things like that. Um, but I decided that I didn't want to sell anything that came from countries that may or may not use slave labor. I don't know, I don't know what goes on. So I really, really wanted to source jewelry that was manufactured in the United States. And let me tell you, that is hard. Man, U.S. manufacturing is just not a thing. Like it's just really, really hard to find. So when I stopped selling those, and if you have one, don't feel bad. Like I, I don't, don't feel like I'm some virtuous person who never buys anything made in China. I do, absolutely. I'm pretty sure all of this stuff, in fact, I think it says made in China right on the bottom. Um, when I'm my best self, I try to say a little prayer for the person who made this thing for, for me and you know, just offer a little thanksgiving for, for them that, that they were able to make these things that I very much enjoy. Um, call that person to mind. It's just not possible to not buy anything that comes from China. It's just not possible. But in my store, I wanted to sell things that were manufactured in the US. So that took me a while. It took me, what, almost a year um, from when I stopped selling my previous necklaces, which I still wear, by the way, I still love those necklaces. And then I, I moved into these new ones. Now, these are on a different level. <laughs> the, the, the ones from before were, um, you know, lovely jewelry that will last a long time if you take care of it, particularly if you don't get it wet. Um, nice, nice jewelry that was affordable. This jewelry is at a different level. It is, um, really nice, like it's really, really beautiful. Um, so the prices are a little bit higher, which I wasn't sure how you guys were gonna react to that, but you don't mind, you don't mind. 
I've had so many orders for these necklaces. I'm, I'm just so pleased with how much you guys like them. Um, I'll go through them real quick. Uh, the first one that I released, I did release these one at a time. This is the Chloe necklace. And see that little toggle there? It does not come loose. Like it's, there we go. It's completely fixed. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't come apart. So it won't, you won't lose it. Um, but the, the, the clasp on these is just so nice. Um, oops, that's the wrong side. Um, they're just, they're just beautiful. So it's hard for me to, to show it, but that's a locket that opens like that. And I have this in silver tone and 14 karat gold dipped. One's got the chain wrapped around it. Hold on. There we go. I just think that's so pretty. This one is very delicate and very kind of feminine, I think. I like that one a lot. That's the Chloe. Uh, and these are over on the website. They are in stock. Um, so that's the delicate one. That's the like understated one, if that's your thing. If you are more of a statement person, we have Odette. This is the Odette stitch marker necklace. It has this cool bail and then a double chain. So this is silver and gold in, in color. Um, and then this, because it is large, holds many, many stitch markers. I think there's eight in both colors. And these are all the hexagons. They're either um, brass or silver tone. So that is Odette, and that's a that's a good size. That's a nice, healthy size, and you can kind of see on the back, it's got a textured floral pattern. Isn't that pretty? It's kind of sparkly. Um, so today, I put out Josephine. Isn't this one gorgeous? Oh my gosh. So this has a lobster claw clasp, and just a really thick kind of statement chain and a gorgeous Parisian inspired 18th century, um, what's the word, replica. Apparently during the Victorian period, women used to carry around like perfumed cloths in these because the streets smelled so bad. But luckily our streets smell better now. So this one has stitch markers in it and this kind of opens flat. You can see, I have pictures on Instagram and on my website too. That's just, this one is a bit pricier. And so I was a little nervous about releasing it, but um, the last I checked, I don't have many left. So anything that sells out, I will get more. Don't worry. Um, finally, the last necklace that I, that I currently have right now is the Agatha Magnifier necklace. And I did name this after Agatha Christie. <laughs> so you can... Now this is a double magnification. So I have this in silver and the 14 karat gold dipped. So this is nice because if you're at the grocery store and you forgot your reading glasses, you can just, you know, kind of Mr. Peanut your way into, <laughs> what does that say? This is a double magnifier. So it doubles the size of, of things. Um, would anyone be interested in a magnifier that's four to five times magnification because um, I do have the option for one like that too. It, it's slightly different. This one, it has a very lacy, pretty look here that I really like. And it's got this twisty chain um, and you can take it right over your head. So this is it in the silver tone and here it is in the 14 karat gold dipped. And I have both of these in stock. They I sold out recently after Michelle and Leslie of the Naughty Nitwits talked about it on their podcast. I sold out after that, but I got more. So um, if you're interested, these are in stock right now. And if, you, if you're interested, go sign up for my newsletter because the newsletter people always get to shop first and they usually get a little bit of a discount code too. So uh, it's good to be on the newsletter if you're interested in that. Um, gosh, how did I get through that so fast? I have a few more things. Um, 
Something that I was selling before from Kelmscott Designs, which is a US scissors manufacturer. These are the Devon scissors, uh, not named for me. It's D-E-V-O-N. But I just thought they were so pretty and they were the Devon scissors. And so I have these in stock. These are $13 each. They're like uh, thread snips for thread or yarn or just, you know, snips for your purse. So those are available in the shop. Um, finally, sorry about the crinkle. I have um, 50 gram mermaid sets. So this is 250 total grams of yarn, which is I think almost 1200 yards uh, in the mermaid colorways, um, which are, oh my gosh, I named this one Open Ocean. And, G and Gigi goes, soap and lotion? I was like, how did I name an open ocean and not soap and lotion? <laughs> From Finding Dory, you know, anyway. Uh, conch, sea tangle, mermaid, and tresses. So this is available in the shop. Um, yeah, gosh, I really got through everything quickly, but this has been super fun. Um, set, leave me a comment and tell me what you're working on. And if you're, you know, going to join in the hat cal or the socks cal, that would be awesome. Um, hopefully I will be podcasting more regularly, although I'll have to see how it worked on my phone instead of um, my camera, which is just old. <laughs> like it's just, my husband was like, this is 2005 technology. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, um, we'll see how this goes. And um Anything else? Yeah, join me over on Instagram, sign up for my newsletter. Thanks for watching. Bye, knitters.